In Japan, National Registry of Dialysis started in 1968 when only 215 patients. However, the number increased rapidly and reached almost 350,000 in half century. The prevalence is 260 per million, that is unfortunately the second largest in the world now. The modality of RRT is mainly hemodialysis that counts 60% followed by hemodial filtration 37%. PD is only 2.8%. Home HD is only 720 patients total. HDF has increased since some incentives started in 2012. Kidney transplant was 1,865 in 2018, and 90% is from living related donor. Japan is the country of longevity next to Iceland, so are dialysis patients. The mean age of dialysis patient is 68 years old, and we have 7,500 patients older than 90 years old currently. Obviously, aging is not an excluding criterion in Japan. The mean dialysis duration is 7.3 years, and 8.4% is longer than 20 years. The longest is 50 years and 4 months of dialysis. The secret of this longevity is the low mortality rate. The crude mortality rate stays less than 10% for 20 years and the lowest among countries of DOPS international study. Main cause of death is now infection and CVD persistently decreases. This is the history of CKD MBD management in Japan. 1970, first breakthrough of the management of secondary hyperparathyroidism was discovery of 125-dihydroxyvitamin D3 produced by the kidney. 1973, clinical application of Kalsch trial started and this active vitamin D3 dramatically reduced the fracture of dialysis patient. 1981, First oral vitamin D3 analog alpha carstol was developed in Japan and started for dialysis patients. Since then, most of dialysis patients was given active vitamin D3 until now. 1992, aluminum toxicity was found and the use of aluminum containing phosphate binder was prohibited for dialysis patients. 2000, intravenous vitamin D receptor agonist, carstriol and oxacalistol were added for the treatment of secondary hyperparathyroidism. 2004, first non-calcium containing binder, cevelamal chloride, was introduced. 2008, among several breakthroughs, the first calcium mimetics, sinacalcet, was introduced that decreased the incidence of PTX dramatically in Japan. For the first time, Sinacalcet enabled us to suppress PTH without hypercalcemia nor hyperphosphatemia, which is in contrast with vitamin D3 regimen. 2020, until now, new stronger calcium mimetics, Evercalcet, has been added to the Japanese clinical scene. According to the prospective cohort in Japan, before Sinacalcet, 58% showed high calcium and high phosphate even with normal PTH. After Sinacalcet, the number decreased to 22% and 26% satisfied all three target levels. That was only 4% before Sinacalcet. What is the secret of low mortality in Japanese dialysis patients? Comparing with US and Europe, possible reasons could be 1. Higher AV fissure use, 2. Frequent fission round with routine checkup of x ray, 3. Dental hemodialysis with lower blood flow rate with high performance membrane, 4. Lower dialysate bicarbonate level. And most of all, the strictest regulation of dialysate and the toxin level resulting the lowest CRP and ferritin level. In order to maintain dialysate as clean as possible, the following procedures are common. 1. Central dialysate supply system that delivers premixed dialysate. 2. 
double end toxin filters at both the outlet of prepared dialysis and the inlet to personal console. 3. Non-stop continuous dialysate flow in the circuit keeps inside of corrosion-free piping clean. Finally, checking the purity of dialysate every week to keep end toxin concentration below 0.001.